Screenplay formatting. Okay, look, there seems to be a lot of hand-wringing over how to do it. What's right? What should I inundate? What's capitalized? What's not capitalized? How detailed do I need to be? Okay, and yeah, there's some general rules and people have little preferences and things like that. But the key here is to understand the most important thing, and that's what you want your screenplay to be as economical and direct as possible. Now, in order to do that, look, you should absolutely positively use screenwriting software, no question. The last thing you want to do while writing is wasting time indenting and formatting when really you should be concentrating on your story. And screenwriting software will absolutely do all the annoying stuff for you. Okay, so let's focus on the important stuff. Here are the eight kinds of items or lines you can find in a screenplay. Header, action line, character ID, dialogue, character parenthetical, dialogue parenthetical, transition, and over black and title markers. And that's it, there's really only eight. So let's go through them one by one. Headers, or slug lines. There's lines at the top that are all caps and they're very important for your scene. The first part of it tells you whether it is interior or exterior. And this is really important for when you're shooting. You need to know if you're shooting indoors or outdoors. After that, it's followed by location, followed by a dash, followed by the time of day. And it looks like this. Interior, Joey's kitchen, dead. You need a new slug line anytime the location changes or the time of day changes, or you're just beginning a new scene. Sounds obvious, right? I should mention there's one little complication you can run into, and that's any time a scene is transitioning from an interior to an exterior without cutting. Well, when that happens, what you can do is you can write interior slash exterior. Joey's house, day. Joey walks out of the door, stops, walks back in, stops, walks back out again. Stops. Okay, where are we starting this scene? Item number two, action lines. The action line is a line of the description underneath the header that describes in more detail what is happening in the scene. It looks like this. Joey walks into the kitchen, scratches his butt, and gets milk out of the fridge. Okay, important thing to consider, action lines should only be visual information things you can actually see on screen. Now we'll get into more detail about what makes good action lines later, but a good thing to note is the first time we see a character in the script, their name should be in all caps. It's just an easy way to keep track of how many characters appear in your story. Three, character. Okay, a character designation goes below an action line and it lets you know who is talking and really it just looks like this. Joey walks into the kitchen, scratches his butt, and gets milk out of the fridge. Why do you have me keep scratching my butt? That's how it's written, Joey. I can make you do anything. Oh, God. <coughs> Four, dialogue. You can see it briefly in the example we just did, but a character's words are put below the character's name. And then when another person talks, it looks like this. Oh, hey, Danny, what are you doing in this scene? I don't know, Mike just told me to show up to go over what dialogue looks like with two people in a scene. In this scene? Perfect, the next kind of line is character parenthetical. Now, these are the parentheses next to the character's name that tell the reader if the character talking is doing something besides the standard talking to another person on screen. Now, for a few examples, there is voiceover, VO, off-screen dialogue, OS, and then there are special designations for things like talking into a phone. You can use just the simple into phone. It looks like this. You wanna play Mario Kart? You bet your second place butt I do. Pick up your phone! Hello? <sighs> okay, you can play two chairs. Four races, random, all items, on hardcom. No! No hardcom! It's not a pure test of skill! Yes, I know, that's what I said, Jerry. And so, the great debate of what setting of calm difficulty would truly separate the casuals from the more dedicated, real racers raged for nearly a fortnight. And this tutorial was put off for several weeks due to the aftermath of the great banana incident of 2015. Brian, Brian, uh, we're not doing the banana incident. What? I had a whole thing about the bananas. It's just really sensitive right now. Are you talking about the bananas? I'm talking about the bananas, Joey. Um. 
can't stop me. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, so you'll hopefully notice how many different kinds of emphasis you can put on who is saying what to who and from where. But you can also control how people say the actual dialogue with dialogue parentheticals. Six, dialogue parentheticals. Okay, so this is different from the character parenthetical and is placed instead right below the character line and right above the dialogue, intended just a little. Now the purpose is to illustrate how the person is talking or what is their tone or what their emotion is. It can also indicate when another language is being used. It looks like this. It's not fair, Danny! I know, that's the point. Life is unfair. It's difficult. It's hard. It's just not fair. Come here, it's okay. It's okay. Life is unfair. Okay, look, the thing to know about character parentheticals is that, unlike the deeply moving scene that you just saw, you really don't want to use them that much. For one, you're a writer. It's not your job to direct the actors. And more importantly, you're a writer which means the emotions in the scene should already be clear from the dialogue itself. Seriously, in the scene you just watched, you can remove every single one of those dialogue parentheticals. They're unnecessary. Now, honestly, the reason we use them is because you want to inform the reader when an actor is behaving or delivering a line differently than how the dialogue would have us expect on its own. And one last version of the dialogue parenthetical is when a character begins speaking in a different language. No es justo. No es justo. Mi español es terrible. Me gusta haría pedir tres tacos, por favor. Okay, that wraps up all the dialogue and brings us to our next subject, transitions. So, transitions come at the end of a scene, but right down on the little right-hand side of the page, oh, right would be over here. Their job is to explain the kind of transition being made between the scenes. Now, the most common version of a transition at the end of a scene is, of course, cut to and you would use that to lead into the slug line of the next scene. But you don't have to use it every time. For one, it's obvious you're cutting to a new scene because of the new slug line. For two, it's a waste of precious screenplay space. Now, it's not specifically an editing note. You're not trying to be like crossfade, star wipe, etc. You let your editors do that. You really only want to use it for a transition anytime you're emphasizing a cut and its importance to the story, specifically how it links the action. Really, you want to think of a cut to as a therefore. Dude, are you sure you should be doing that? Yeah, Mike said he can make me do whatever I want. Oh god, this is all Mike's fault! But there are of course other kinds of transitions you can use too. You can use smash cut too, which is anytime you want a cut to land really, really hard and rock the audience and have them notice it. I'm gonna be alright, right? They'll be fine. I think. Sorry, buddy. And then there's fade to black, which you can use to end your film or anytime you want to emphasize a slow transition over time. And here's a special one for you that I get questions about all the time. It's called intercut with. This is an awesome time saver for when two characters are in two different locations, usually on the phone or something like that. And instead of rewriting the slug lines every time you want to cut back and forth, you can instead imply to the filmmakers that they should film the entirety of both scenes in both locations and leave the tough decision of when to cut back and forth to the editor. Hello? Yo, I heard you were playing Mario Kart. You better save me a spot. <sighs> you can play too, Cherish. Four races, random, all items, on Hardcom. No! No Hardcom! It's not a pure test of skill! Why the Hardcom is the weaker game? Yes, I know. That's what I said, Cherish. Still with me? Okay, here we are. Time for the last one. Over Black. Now, reading screenplays, you'd be amazed how many people don't know what to call it when the screen is black and you're doing a title card or audio or just whatever, chiefly because there's no interior or exterior being shown. So, all you do is write over black in the header screen. It looks like this. How much longer is this edit gonna take? About an hour. You sure? Because we really need this done. I'm telling ya! An hour. I'm sorry I yelled. Joey! Lauren! Joey! Sorry, it took longer than I thought! Joey! Your name is Lauren, my name is Joey! Yay, that's it. As always, you can find us in the forum discussion for the video, and we'll talk about any burning questions you may have. See you next time. Thanks, everybody.